The next item of business today is the Members' Business Debate on Motion No. 13952 in the name of James Dornan on Step Change Debt Charities Action Plan on Problem Debt. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I would ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to please press the request to speak buttons now. I would also ask guests leaving the gallery to note that this parliament is still in session and please do so quietly. Thank you. I call on James Dornan to open the debate. Seven minutes, please, Mr Dornan. Thank you, President Officer. And, uh, I want to start off by thanking those colleagues who signed the motion and, of course, those that are speaking in this important debate on personal debt problems. I'd also like to pay tribute to Step Change Debt Charity for their hugely successful work in the area of personal debt crisis and for their assistance in preparing for this debate. I'm sure other members have been beneficiaries of the excellent research provided by the charity's public affairs officer, Mr James Stewart, and Gillian Thompson, a trustee who are present in the gallery today. I want to thank all his colleagues for the help they have given us. Step Change is the largest provider of free independent debt advice and managed debt solutions in the United Kingdom. Last year, they helped 16,000 people, a figure that has almost doubled since 2012. They boast an impressive stat. 97% of their clients who enter statutory debt repayment solutions successfully pay off their debt. This is the highest of all debt providers in Scotland. This is a commendable feat and one that has helped to alleviate untold stress on many families and individuals in all our constituencies. This is achieved by providing their clients with a tailored and detailed financial plan that reassures both the client and creditor with affordable repayments. This undoubtedly brings hope to those who once felt hopeless. In cash terms, debt change helped their clients to pay off £30 million of debt in Scotland last year. I recently visited the Scottish headquarters in Bodwell Street and was granted permission from the clients to sit in on some telephone consultations. The conversations between clients and advisors raised a number of issues. The first was that, despite the Tory government's assertion that indebtedness is an issue for, in their words, the unemployed and the feckless, Step Change's research demonstrates this is clearly not the case. Around one-third of clients are in full-time employment, another 30% are unemployed, and the remaining 40% are those who are retired or students, carers and those in part-time employment. The advisor I was attached to, Michelle Robertson, shared with me two calls that particularly stick in my mind. The first were two doctors, GPs, who had £36,000 of payday loan debts across 27 different individual loans. These clients are not low-wage earners. These clients are not unemployed or sick or infirm. They're a well-paid couple who still find themselves dragged into the debt trap. This just highlights how anyone can be caught in a spiral of misery. The other call I was told of was much more concerning. A gentleman had taken out a payday loan of £60 over a three-day period. After missing the first repayment date, interest and charges escalated, and by the time he contacted Step Change, his debt was £3,500. By the time Step Change were able to put a hold on it, it was £5,000. Now, this is just wrong. It's morally wrong, economically wrong, and in my view, should be legally wrong to charge such exorbitant levels of interest. President Officer, research step change has conducted regarding the effects of the proposed Tory tax credit reforms show that currently 17% of step change's clients who have three or more children are running a budget deficit. If these horrendous reforms are carried through, this figure shall take an astonishing leap to 90% with an average loss of £231 per month. This clearly demonstrates, beyond doubt, the importance of tax credits in assisting families to simply make ends meet. And without playing political games, I do want to say that the sooner this Parliament has the power to create its own tax credit system, the better for everyone affected by it. What is also extremely worrying is that step change are seeing the makeup of clients' debt shift from credit card debt to arrears and essential bills. In 2008, the average debt of a step change client was £25,000. The good news is that this has fallen to £14,000. However, now that debt is comprised mainly of rent arrears, council tax arrears and utility bill debt, both in socially rented accommodation and the private rented sector. So accruing debt has now come from buying things you would like but could do without to having to fall into debt to stay in your home and keep your utilities on. Sign officer, while there's clearly still a huge debt problem in Scotland, it is widely recognised that the efforts of the Scottish Government have assisted in providing help to those with debts. Scotland is the only statutory debt arrangement scheme in the UK, and the six-week breathing space 
that freezes interest rates and charges to allow a manageable and sensible debt repayment schedule. That is not available to clients in any other part of the United Kingdom, and we should be proud that we're leading the way. I not only commend the sterling work that Step Change does, but acknowledge the many successful outcomes that James and his colleagues have reached for their clients. Their action plan outlines how this Parliament can help to ensure that Scotland continues to help those with debt problems, and I would recommend all members in the Chamber to read it. I would urge all members to contact Step Change and see how they can help you in your constituencies. The research is thorough and detailed to a constituency level, which is very helpful in getting a feel for the local situation. Presiding officer, none of our constituencies are free from personal debt. Step Change reaches out into all our communities and provides vital help, and for that, they should be strongly commended and supported. Thank you. Many thanks. We now turn to the open debate speeches of four minutes or so, please, and I call Ken McIntosh to be followed by Gavin Brown. Uh, thank you, President Officer. And can I also begin by thanking uh, my colleague James Dornan for bringing forward today's debate. Uh, I think a particularly timely uh, moment for the debate in the run-up to Christmas. Uh, I think many of us should be, and many families should be, looking forward with some uh, sense of anticipation and excitement. But actually, the, the gross materialism that is uh, so typical of Christmas these days means it's a time of anxiety and dread. And many families will simply be asking themselves, how do I get through this? How will I survive Christmas? And of course, we know the answer. They will turn to loans and debt and credit cards and, and everything else, uh, increasing this problem. And I also want to thank Step Change uh, uh, for not just for the bringing forward the briefing and uh, uh, for the help for the, today's debate, but for the work they do in helping uh, people across Scotland and across the UK. I had cause to refer um, a constitu uh, three constituents in one family to Step Change just two weeks ago. And uh, this is a family, three working adults, I may add, mother and two uh, young adults uh, in their 20s, all of them with, in work, all of them in work. Uh, the mother with a permanent job and had a permanent job for some time, low paid. Uh, the two sons in and out of work. And what had happened in the last couple of months is that one of the sons had two part-time jobs and he lost both of them. And the other son lost his part-time job. And the effect on the family was catastrophic. Now, the difficulty, this family had been in and out of work for several years. They actually fell into council tax debt in 2010, and they've been in and out of uh, council tax debt in arrears and other kinds of debt for five years now, constantly being threatened with court action, then reaching arrangement schemes and coming back, and they were faced with a court action this week. The council uh, have tried to arrange, or in the middle of rearranging a, a, a payment plan, but often what happens in, in these situations is the payment plan is actually one that's unaffordable to them. And so it's not manageable and it creates another crisis. Now, these are very difficult issues. There is no doubt about it. But it points to the sort of help that Step Change are, are highlighting here. Very small savings to give people the resilience to survive, plus financial advice and support to see them through. Uh, difficult issues, but uh, I think Step Change are pointing the way through. And I, I'm not sure how typical uh, this family is, but I don't think it's untypical. And I was conscious of the fact that uh, James Dornan said that these are not unemployed, not feckless, irresponsible people. They're often families, uh, and I would actually also make the point, I don't want to replay the tax credits argument either, but you know we have the powers here to make a difference. So let's use those powers. It will help some of these people. There's also another group though, it's a generational issue. A lot of the people in terms of the growing problem of debt are young. Um, I think two thirds uh, of, uh, oh, sorry, of three quarters of uh, between 25 and 35 year olds are anxious about the current debt compared to about a third for those over 65. Now, I want to just, if I can, just mention my own constituency because uh, I was sent the statistics by Step Change and it's uh, quite worrying. Eastwood clients had the highest average debt in Scotland, 23,500 per person, the highest in Scotland. And over a third were in arrears with a council tax, such as the constituents I saw. 15% of clients had a payday loan with an average balance of just under £2,000. And I noticed that was growing every single year, increasing every year and a quarter had rent arrears. Now, you can only surmise as to why that might be the case, and I imagine it's linked to the fact that uh, Eastwood is a relatively prosperous area, and I believe that uh, with higher incomes, you can borrow more money, and so you get into deeper debt. Uh, but it shows that the problem is across the board. And if I can, very briefly, uh, just turn to some of the things that we can do. Uh, financial education, you know, one in, uh, uh, one in five people can't even read a bank statement. So financial education, I think, is vital. Uh, social advertising from the government, I admit that it's difficult, you know, uh, we can spend uh, thousands or perhaps tens of thousands 
whereas Wonga are spending millions of tens of millions, but it is something we can do. I think a breathing space that we've been talking about uh, that the government has introduced, uh, I asked the Minister, uh, Mr Ewing, earlier this year what his position was on extending the six-week breathing space, the moratorium and diligence under the debt arrangement scheme. And at the time he said that it, it, it currently can be uh, extended in prescribed circumstances, but he had no plans to further extension. I, I would ask him whether he is looking at this because it's clearly very helpful to lift that threat from people in their moment of crisis. But the most important conclusion from step change, the most important recommendation is that a thousand pounds in savings would protect 50,000 households in Scotland from problem debt. Just that little bit of resilience. And there are so many things that we are doing currently that we could build on. I would draw the Minister's attention to the iSave Credit Union in Renfrewshire, the Savvy Savers in South Lanarkshire, and the Future Savers Scheme in Glasgow, all based on credit unions, all supported by our councils who give usually people's nest one ten pounds to start a scheme and it gets them in good habits, hopefully for the rest of their life. This is the sort of initiative that could really make a difference. It's something the government could support, perhaps underwriting with a loan guarantee scheme, and I would ask the government to look at it. I would end by congratulating Mr Dornan yet again on bringing today's important debate. Thank you. Many thanks. I now call Gavin Brown to be followed by Sandra White. Uh, presenting officer, thank you. Can I also start by congratulating James Dornan on securing this debate and on raising an important issue and I think highlighting an excellent report uh, conducted by Step Change. I would say at the outset, though, that if we are serious about doing something to help families across the country, our time is far better served discussing this excellent report instead of making partisan and political remarks. And I hope the Minister will focus his speech on the report and what we can do instead of uh, making partisan remarks. Uh, Presenting officer, this report covers a range of areas but it also comes up with, I think, six excellent solutions, all of which uh, require further investigation and two of which I want to focus on in the course of my remarks. Uh, Ken McIntosh is right to say that this time of year is a particular challenge for families. Uh, no time of year is easy, of course, but Christmas does present a particular challenge, which is a good reason for having the debate now. But I think the problem, which is already widespread with three million people across the UK, could potentially grow as the years go by with the challenges we face in the global economy, Euro difficulties being delayed but not resolved. But the biggest challenge of all, and one which I have to say I genuinely fear, is that at some point, whether that is next year, the year after, or the year after that, interest rates will go up. Interest rates can hardly come down. They've been at half a percent. Uh, they have become effectively normalized at half a percent. But when interest rates do go up, whether that's to 1% or 2%, that will cause a whole new generation of problems for tens of thousands of families across the country. So now is the time to put in the hard yards, the big effort in a cross-party, cross-national basis to try and make sure we get on the right path as soon as we possibly can. Presenting officer, the two issues in particular, which I think the issue raised that I want to focus on are this. One of the solutions from Step Change, uh, focused on uh, pages primarily 10 and 11 of the report, is calling for a review of affordable credit, trying to seek far better alternatives to the high interest credit that those on low incomes generally face. We read in a previous step change report that 29% of total debt is on credit cards, which have some of the highest APRs and rates. Presenting officer, this will not be an easy challenge to review because typically the uh, more money somebody has, the better prospect they will get the lower credit terms they will get, the less money they have, and particularly those who need it most, will get the highest and most challenging credit terms. So it's not easy, but I have to say I was particularly impressed by the Good Shepherd project in Australia, which the uh, report highlights, a microfinance programme which pulls a range of charitable government and financial services support and funding, provide different low-income loans and grants to suit different circumstances, and provides available mainstream banks and high street outlets locally. Um, presenting officer, it appears to have been a big success in Australia. Uh, I know little about it other than what is in the report, but it strikes me as perhaps a very good starting point to try and help people, not just in Scotland, but across the UK as a whole. The second point, which I think was particularly strong in the report, is the idea that we need a pretty big expansion of free debt advice. There are very good charities out there. Step Change do a particularly good job. There are government schemes too, presenting officer. But with 3 million people across the UK uh, being 
uh, in serious debt problems at the moment, we need to do more and we need to do much more because I think the people that we are currently reaching are actually those who are best placed to sort their problems out. The ones I worry about most are the ones that don't come to debt charities, the ones that uh, literally put their heads in their hands, allow their stress to grow and with every uh, week or month that passes in that situation, it becomes more difficult to resolve the problems and the debts rack up. Uh, in a sometimes frightening way in the J way that uh, James Dornan talked about his second example. So, presenting officer, getting debt advice in a more innovative, innovative way so that we start to reach the people that currently, quite simply, aren't being reached seems to be something that we need to look at pretty urgently. And I'd ask the Minister to address both of those points uh, should he have time uh, in his closing remarks. Thank you. Many thanks. And I now call Sandra White. Uh, thank you very much, President Officer. And can I also thank James Doran for bringing uh, this issue to the Chamber today. Uh, there is no doubt by the evidence we have seen in the papers we have been given and also by the contributions from other MSPs that uh, people are increasingly finding it difficult to manage. And as Ken McIntosh had said, with the Christmas period coming up and you have these huge advertising campaigns aimed at parents for children, uh, you know, it's obvious that people get into debt and find it very, very difficult to get back out of it again uh, and I do congratulate you know Step Change and the other organisations who provide uh, help and advice during a very difficult period for many many people. Now like James Doan and I have visited Debt Change it is in my constituency in the Glasgow City Centre and very very impressed by you know how it's handled there. The first thing I did uh, twice I visited I uh, spoke to the staff because I'm always conscious of the fact that in some cases it it's based on how many calls you take and how quickly you alleviate uh, you know, the people and the calls that come in. But what really impressed me was the fact that people took their time over these calls and I was also allowed to you know, listen in uh, on behest of uh, the clients also uh, to some of the issues that were raised there. And one particular one sticks in my mind where they actually phoned a person back who um, had to go out and get their mobile phone charged up and they actually phoned them whilst they were out with their mobile phone to give them advice as quickly as possible, just like that, uh, so that they could actually go down and sort something out. So I was very impressed by, you know, what was offered through uh, Step Change and uh, Debt Change, and I really hope that they continue to provide uh, this advice as well. Uh, like Ken McIntosh, I presume, uh, many people believe that my constituency in Glasgow Kelvin is a very affluent constituency, and it is in certain parts, obviously, but we also uh, have problems. And uh, I just wanted to give you a couple of figures which will probably surprise people uh, when they think of the Glasgow Kelvin constituency. In, in Kelvin, over one third of my constituencies were in arrears with their rent. 17% had electricity bill arrears. 41% of clients had council tax arrears. And 16% had a payday loan with an average balance of £1,560. And as Ken McIntosh, and I think Gavin also said, the fact that sometimes if you get more money, you can afford to take out more credit cards, etc., etc. But I think the importance of not just this debate, but the fact that uh, you know, we have these organisations, is it's important for this parliament and also for us to ensure that people know that these organisations exist because I think that is a big problem. And I'll come on to the issue that Ken McIntosh raised also. Uh, people, yeah, they do hide their head in the sand, unfortunately. But if they were more aware that there was help out there, and I think that's our job and others, government's job as well, to ensure that the people know that it is out there, they may contact them more timidly. And that's where basically the kind of breathing space comes in in the issue. And we know that we in Scotland are very, very lucky. And James Dornan and Ken McIntosh have also mentioned that. But, uh, you know, we have that advantage over, you know, other parts of the UK that we do have this breathing space. But as already been mentioned, it is only six weeks. And sometimes when people take that step, that big step, to contact organisations, they're already three or four weeks in arrears. And by the time they put forward their papers and contact various people, you know, the interest in these debts are, are, are mounting up. And, and I would like to, to you know, ask the Minister, any summing up, is there any other way we can actually extend that period, be it to nine weeks or even 12 weeks, maybe even beyond that? Because people tend to bury their head in the sand and it is a, it is a great worry that people don't contact people, the organisations, straight away. Yes, I mean, James Dornan mentioned the situation just now with the tax credits and, you know, Westminster. 
And I don't think we can hide from that, you know, Mr Roberts. It's not being political to mention that. I think we have all got to work together in this chamber to ensure that people are aware there is help out there for them, regardless of what the political situation is. So I would just like to say that I think we all agree that these organisations do a great job. We have to highlight and publicise them more, but perhaps we could extend the breathing space a wee bit, and I would look forward to the Minister's reply and his summing up. Thank you. Many thanks. And can I now invite Fergus Schoeng to respond to the debate, Minister? Seven minutes or so, please. Presiding officer, um, I, I'm delighted that James Dornan has given us the opportunity to debate the excellent work that the charity Step Change performs for people in Scotland and throughout the UK. Uh, and reference is made to the fact that Gillian Thompson uh, 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 of Step Change is uh, listening to this debate, and she was the former accountant bankruptcy with whom I, I worked for for many years. And uh, Sharon Bell, who also works with Step Change, uh, used to be um, an advisor to the Scottish Government and sits at the seats up at the back in these debates, which I've carried out since 2007, uh, presiding officer. I want to focus on the work that Step Change has done and on its report and action plan on problem debt. I think this is one of the best reports that I've seen for a long time. And it focuses on practical solutions to what I think is one of the most deep-seated and serious problems that is so often hidden from view in Britain. In the UK, over 2.4 million dependent children live in indebted households. Step change point out these children suffer hardship and mental distress. More than half of the children aged 10 to 17 are embarrassed because they lack the things their peers have. Uh, and nearly one in five have been bullied as a result. Step change point out that personal credit debt in the UK stands at 168 billion. Now, debt isn't a problem in itself. Debt is necessary for some purposes in life and where it is managed and controlled and affordable and repaid, it is necessary uh, for many purposes, buying a house, buying a car. But where it becomes a problem, then I'm afraid things become very different indeed. And the problem is very often not triggered by any fault, by profligacy. The problem is very often delivered by things that occur in life, such as losing a job, being made redundant, such as illness in a family, such as relationship breakdown. And that was evident to me in the days somewhat in the distant past now, presiding officer, when I was running a small legal practice and where I routinely acted for the debtor and focused in particular on specialising in trying to preserve the family home. Uh, and uh, that experience uh, left its mark on me as explaining and uh, giving me an insight into the human cost, the human misery of these problems. So what are step change in this report recommending? Well, they recommend that every family should have £1,000 in savings to cover a sudden cost or income shock. There are many shocks for people who have no spare cash. The washing machine breaks down. Uh, if you have children, well, you know, you need a washing machine. Go out and buying it with a payday loan can be the start of the problems. And Mr Dornan gave one example of a payday loan. Uh, it sounds like an ambitious policy, but if you read the recommendations in Step Change Report, they go some way to saying how it could be made to work. Uh, through nudging uh, and changing behaviour, through deductions, through linking it to the automatic payroll pension, I believe. That wouldn't deal with self-employed, it wouldn't deal with people below 10,000 income. But read the report, because I think it sets out a fascinating proposal that across the parties, I hope, will receive the attention it deserves. To ensure all low-income households can access low-cost credit products, um, Step Change, as James Dornan pointed out, advise a huge number of people, an enormous number of people in Scotland and the UK. And in a great number of cases, their advice is efficacious. In other words, it works. Of course, not everybody takes advice, as I well remember. Many people choose to ignore it. But many people do and benefit therefrom, and their lives change for the better substantially. Um, we want to scale up free advice so that it reaches the 1.4 million people who urgently need it. And that's why amongst the reforms that we've made is to make uh, debt advice mandatory in certain circumstances. And that has led in turn to, I think, a greater uptake of advice. 
uh, to ensure that everyone dealing with their debt problem gets the protection against interest charges, enforcement and collections that they need. And uh, we, we have in Scotland taken forward the DAS, the Debt Administration Scheme proposal. Uh, I'm not sure they've got a counterpart in England. It works well. It provides a diligence stopper. The fear of debt, debt action being taken, the sheriff officers coming to the door, is a huge fear. Unless one has been there or has spoken to people uh, directly who have been affected, it's difficult to understand that in our comfortable lives, we are unaware of these pressures. And therefore, that's the diligence stopper of six weeks provides a breathing space. Now, three members, I think, have said maybe this should be extended. Let me confirm, we are undertaking a policy review of all the um, badass, that's a piece of legislation, uh, presiding officer reforms, including the moratorium period, and that will take place next year. Um, a, it's the badass, as I should say, um, presiding officer for the uninitiated is the bankruptcy and debt advice Scotland legislation. Um, a, it just trips off the tongue, does it not? Uh, and we need to protect children and families for the harm of aggressive debt collection practices. I mean, I was pleased that payday loans are now subject to caps of £15 default fee and 100% interest. But I mean, for goodness me, 100% interest? Is that, is that the right cap? I don't think so. The first debate we had in this session of Parliament, members' debate, was on that topic. And I pressed the UK government time and time again. Firstly, they said, we're not doing anything about it. Latterly, they did, but I don't think they or the FCA have gone far enough. Um, presenting officer, I see my, my, I'm into my last minute. And could I just say that uh, if step change didn't exist, we would have to invent them. They are a great charity. They do terrific work. Ma Mr. McIntosh's suggestion or, or practice of referring a constituent to step change, I think, is one that we could emulate. And maybe we could encourage uh, MSPs and MPs to do that because they will receive good advice. We are doing a lot in education at the moment. We've got a, a financial health service policy which 35,000 people have benefited from. We are working as, uh, a, on credit union availability about which I have uh, 18 seconds to impart. Not enough, I'm afraid, perhaps another day. But I think in Scotland there is a broader consensus that the sort of recommendations from Step Change in this excellent, excellent report and action plan and problem debt are things that we want to do and we want to see happen. And if we do them, even only partly, we will make a tremendous difference to the lives of many in this country, uh, which are scarred by the misery of having a problem debt issue. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. And that concludes James Donnan's debate, Step Change Debt Charities Action Plan on Problem Debt. And I now suspend this meeting until 2.30 p.m. <laughs>